All right. Um, upon popular request, I'm going to go through an NLPWM device and its functions. This is the V2 board, uh, very common, very popular. Um, so how I have mine set up is obviously your first click is your power. I have mine set up in wattage. If you want to change it to um, voltage, you're going to push these two buttons, which brings you to a sub menu, and then hit your fire button. That first one says output. Hit your fire button again to select. See how it scrolls wattage. You can change it to voltage, and all you do is click your fire button to lock it in. I'm going to put it back on wattage because that's what I like. It flashes, accepts the output, then defaults back to this menu. From here, you have um, stealth. Um, you can turn the screen off. Whoops. You have uh, yeah. brightness. You can change the brightness of the screen down to one if you wanted to. I like it bright. Again, click it to lock it in. Um, what do we have here? LEDs. If you have onboard LEDs, you can control them. Um, and we have your battery chemistry. Don't play with that unless you're running a LIHV pack. You can set your chemistry up in that last menu. So um, that's the auxiliary menu. Not a lot of people play with it, but it's good to know how to change your device from wattage to voltage output. Next up, two clicks. I This is your battery. So um, this is the old school function way of reading it from the V1. Um, there is, let's see, sorry, it's hard to read this backwards. Uh, there's percentage, 70%, um, a couple different ways to read it. I like to set it to tell me what my pack's full unloaded voltage is, and I'll tell you why. Because 70% for me isn't an accurate number because it doesn't factor in how much sag you have. So that being said, how do you check your sag? Um, three clicks is going to bring you to another menu. You go all the way down till it says H. Hit the fire button, and that tells me 14.7. So 15.7 to 14.7 tells me I have one volt of sag, and that's not going to change as the pack depletes. It's only going to change if you change the atomizer. So um, low voltage cutoff is 13.3 around. I don't run it down to 13.3 until it tells me it's dead. I usually stop at 13.8, 13.5, and throw it on charge. But knowing that, two clicks really quick tells you exactly where your pack's loaded voltage is at, so long as you remember what that number is. So, for my third click, I have it set on resistance. You can also have it set on, um, sorry, uh, how much voltage you're asking the device to use, which is 9.7, uh, how many amps it's drawing, 21 amps, um, and I'm not sure what that last screen is. Let me check. Oh, your duty cycle. Um, I'm not really interested in what my duty cycle is, but I am interested in my resistance. So again, anytime you want to change what that readout is, change it, click it, and then every time from then, it saves it. Um, and it saves it even when you kill your battery, remove your battery, put your battery back in. It's saved, you're not gonna have to do this every time. Um, that's how I have mine set up. Key things to know about an NLPWM V2 board. It is not going to fire any build that sees a load greater than 60 amps. It's going to flash OCP, which means overcurrent protection. Um, that's to keep you and the device safe. So, in reality, even a 0.46 on this is low. 
I'm only putting 9.7 volts of a capable 16 plus at it, but this is one of my favorite builds. So I'm not changing it. Yeah, hold on. So, um, it's gonna tell you when your battery's dead and it's gonna stop firing. It's not gonna fire an unsafe build. Um, let's do this. This is another, another mis common mistake is removing a lipo, okay? So, right? You have to, some chargers only require you to plug in your JST. I really wish I had one of those, but my $100 Venom does not charge only through the JST. I have to connect my power source. So, um, Frank has it Velcroed in per my request so it doesn't rattle around. So yeah, you gotta struggle with it a little bit to get it out, but I would rather that than have it rattle. Okay. So, with your connection, do not just pull this out. You will pull the leads straight off the board or break them off something. Um, it is not designed for that, okay? Just like any other connection, um, when unplugging an electrical cord from a wall, you don't just pull on the cord. You grab the plug and remove the plug. So, again, with this, secure the plug in your hand, secure the other plug in the other hand, simply uh, disconnect trying to keep the end that's on the board in place and pulling on this end to disconnect that will save a lot of headache later on down the road when your connections at the board get weak over time and pull off it happens um, I redid the connections on a mod that I had in my possession for two years because they showed signs of being weak, but never actually ripped them off. Um, and that's how I removed my packs safely and intelligibly. Really, that's it. Uh, if you have it set in wattage mode, um, it's as simple as dialing in your wattage that you your build wants to run at. Um, if you have it in voltage mode, it's the same thing. Uh, essentially, this is a regulated device. It's just has a different set of rules than a DNA. But there is zero hesitation. There is zero hesitation. Uh, the flavor from an NLPWM for me, and I've also confirmed with several other people, is better than a DNA, and I'm not sure why. But do's and don'ts don't ever fire a fresh build on an NLPWM if you ever want to know how to kill a set of Nick Dumas coils the fastest way possible do that because it's going to kill them um, that's if it fires them and doesn't say OCP um, gosh that's really it that's, that's literally it Everything else has been well thought out and doesn't allow you to do it. So, hopefully this is helpful to some. Um, you can set those up however you prefer them. That's how I run mine. Um, I feel that that level of information or intel that's given to me is all I really need for a daily box. I mean, this one's set up the same way. Two clicks, there's my voltage. Three clicks, there's my resistance. Um, for giggles and shits, 16.2, 15.5, that's 0.7 voltage drop. So, at 14 volts, I'm going to be at voltage cut. I'll be at 13.3. Because you hit voltage cut on your loaded voltage, not your unloaded voltage. Hopefully this just wasn't a bunch of rambling and unintelligible information, and hopefully it wasn't too technical where I lost anybody. I'm not a technical person, and Mark will probably laugh at some of this information. But this is how I interpret and understand the board, and how I have safely used NLPWMs for three years now. Numbers-wise, okay? A 2S, 
minimum resistance 0.15, 3S minimum resistance 0.2, 4S minimum resistance 0.25. Um, I have seen it fluctuate where it shows OCP on a 0.26, but in all reality, again, um, these are designed to run more voltage than wattage. So the higher the resistance, the better. Um, prolongs battery life. Um, it is easier to run. Let's see. Um, I'm running a th 300 watts and asking for 12.4 volts. At 12.4 volts, I'm only drawing 24 amps. Um, I mean, that's on a 0.51 build that absolutely will cloud out my house in a couple of rips. So there's really no need to run bare minimum resistance ever. Hopefully that helps. Peace.